Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, this is the Jim of All Trades channel. Glad you made it by. My name is Jim, and I'm a crypto trader and a Forex trader. Uh, and I, uh, I trade from an Elliott Wave perspective, and that's what we focus on on this channel. So glad you made it by. We're going to be looking at Bitcoin today. And uh, I've got a really simple, uh, really simple trading strategy for you that uh, might help you. Uh, you know, you don't have to understand the Elliott Wave count necessarily to be able to use this. Uh, you just have to know some basic principles. So I'm going to give you just a, uh, before this video is over, uh, some basic principles on how you might uh, trade this market, uh, you know, scalp the market for several hundred dollars. If you want to trade Bitcoin, uh, you know, for uh, you know several hundred dollars a move, that's a, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good way to do it. So I'll share that with you uh, in, uh, as we go along. But, but first of all, let's look at the... Um, uh, let's look at the uh, Elliott Wave count and see if we can figure out what's going on here. All right. Well, first off, um, when we start looking at a count and try to figure out, okay, where, what, what is the count and what's going on, the, the very first thing I do here as we look at this is I just look at what jumps out at me, okay? And, and what I see right here, the first thing that jumps out, and this is plain and clear as day, is a three-wave move to start this process, okay? So we've got right here, we've got... Uh, a th three wave move right there. Let me see if I can highlight it for you. With okay, right there is that's our three wave move. Okay, when we put the fibs on that, this came to the one to one extension. Okay, so that means the, the second wave here, the third wave, I should say, was a one to one relationship uh, with the um, excuse me, one second, I got a cough. Excuse me, sorry about that. I come to a one to one a one to one relationship between the uh, the first wave and the third wave. Okay, actually the third wave is a little bit bigger. It almost came to the one two seven extension. Okay, so that's clear and plain as day. Now the the next thing that jumps out at me that uh, I've been counting this as um, I'm going to get this off the screen now. Here, let's see if I can get this white one off the screen. There we go. All right, the second uh, the second thing I see here is what looks to me like a three three and a five okay a three three five uh, a three three five wave pattern is basically a flat okay um, now whether we put the bottom here the bottom here I'm not sure um, I guess it looks more symmetrical that way if we ignore that uh, ignore that um, wick there uh, we just look at this and so basically we've got it looks like a flat right here in the middle so what I would see here is a three wave move comes to the one two seven extension we have a flat connected an ABC connecting wave what we would have to see based on that construction is a three wave move uh, to finish that off okay three waves got to finish in three waves okay now what was interesting here is uh, that let's see I'm in the four hour time frame what we mm, sorry guys I'm just gonna get that out of the way here for now what was interesting here is that um, what we got after this three wave move was we got a three wave move okay but uh, right there there and there but it was rejected, went sideways, and then it continued on. Okay, now how do we deal with that? How do we, how do we? Do? If we go to a lower time frame, you'll see that it actually wasn't a wick so much as that you know just it went up and then you know the, the candle came down. So we did get a three wave move here, but then we have a, a higher high right over here. And so you say, okay, how do we how do we deal with that from an Elliott wave perspective? Now. First off, we want this three-wave move, the second three-wave move, to be proportional to the first three-wave move. In other words, we're looking for a one-to-one -one extension, at least here, of this first three-wave move. So let me show you, uh, as if I put the fibs on this guy, I'm looking for here and then to there. You know, the one-to-one -one extension is calling for 8,900, which I've been calling for weeks now. Uh, the one two sevens up here at 98. I mean, it, it's up here pretty good, guys. Uh, just to... Just to give you an idea, the way this wave is looking here, I want you. I want to compare this wave that's being formed uh, to the size and shape of this wave here. This went up very correctively, went up very correctively, but uh, but you can see how the angle at which it came up. You can see that. Oh, sorry. You can see the uh, the angle at which this one's coming. It's a much the same angle, and so there's really a good likelihood that we probably continue to come on up here uh, to you know 
bring price up into this region to come up and touch these structure regions here um, is really really uh, important that we come up and, and, and really I, I think this structure zone right here is gonna be critical a critical price for us to come and reach so guys I don't I don't think this last move to the downside is gonna be our final move to the downside I think we're gonna get more up the question is wh how is it going up uh, and in what fashion okay which I'm redundant today. So <laughs> so uh, the big question mark is, you know, how, how can we trade this uh, in such a way that we don't miss that, even though it's really, I'll be honest with you, this structure right here, oh, come on, this structure right here, super odd shape. It's really an odd shape and really hard to interpret. So let me give you a couple interpretations of it that, that might fly. Um, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait and see. I'm gonna get these other mo markers off of the uh, table there. Come on, there we go. All right. So right now, all we're doing is focusing on what's this side of the purple line. Okay. So the first thing I see is a three wave move. That's the first thing I see. So I'm gonna, just gonna identify that. Then I see this shape right here that comes next. It's interesting. That's a flat shape, but that's an expanded flat. An expanded flat is where the second the the B wave basically comes higher than the origin of the of the A wave. Okay, that's an expanded flat uh, in the Elliott wave world. Okay, so there's an expanded flat right there. Um, now, whether this is finished or we've got a little bit more downside, uh, you know, not sure about that. Let me show you how we throw the fibs on this guy in expanded flat world here and see. We've already come to the one to one extension. Um, we actually hit the expanded pocket and uh, the expanded flat pocket in here pretty well. Right here, when I throw the retrace, let me throw the retrace on here. You see, we came to the one two, the one point two three uh, extension, which is I have it highlighted in green there. So one two three six is the as a great um, you know retracement uh, area for for an expanded B wave. So there's a high likelihood then that this three wave move is indeed an expanded flat. Okay, so this last move needs to be five waves, and so the question is, is that finished? And so let's zoom into the uh, one-hour chart, look at this last wave, and say, can we do we count five waves in it? Um, it needs to be a three-three-five, right? And so this last one needs to be five waves. Um, let's see here. I'm going to put the fit. You always start when you're counting waves. You always want to start by uh, putting the Fibonacci extension tool on here, and you can see where the one six one eight came to. Um, so this is this is probably the high likelihood of the end of the third wave right here. And so the way I would count this wave right now, as I'm looking at it, is if number one we have an expanded flat. That's criteria number one. Um, and if it's a, if it's an expanded flat, then th this would be a one, a two. This would be the third wave. Okay, we're currently putting the fourth wave in, and we'd need a fifth wave to the downside. Probably, um, if I had to pick where that fifth wave would come, uh, what I would do is I'd look at the top of oh come on, top of this wave bottom of this wave, bottom of this wave. This is a nice structure zone right here. So let's get a little neater with our with our work here. Somewhere around like right here. About $6,600 in that ballpark. Uh, if we're going to get a move to the downside. Now we may not get that because the interpretation of what we have may be incorrect. What could, what could we have instead? We could simply have an Well, I'm trying. There we go. An A, B, and a C wave. Okay? And basically, we would have uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. This could simply be an ABC. Now, the only problem I have with that being ABC is, is pretty deep. It's a pretty deep ABC. Uh, it came down to the 1618. So I'm thinking we're going to have one more wave to the downside, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what we actually get. Okay. So uh, with that being said, where would that put us in the grand scheme of the count? Okay. The two-hour chart here. See if we can see it. Now we know we have three wave move here, three wave move there. So we're looking for a three wave move. So what we would have, we we got basically a three, a three. Now when this is finished, okay, okay, and then 
a third wave to the upside like so. And this should come up in a three wave fashion, okay? Because when you when you start with three waves, guys, um, and then the B wave uh, doesn't come down to 90% uh, of that wave, then, then what you've got is a W, X, and then a Y wave, okay? W, X, Y, which is basically a double zigzag, okay? Three waves, three waves, three waves and you can see how this would look very choppy price action the way this the way this works okay like that if, if you just kind of take a peek at that you see how long price stays in this range for a really long time it basically it's a way to keep price within a range and it corrects and it eats up a lot of time that's what wxys do and that's what's happening we keep they're keeping price in a range right now and it's eating up a lot of time okay so that's why we're getting these up movements and follow up by these down movements and it also makes it really hard to trade. They can, you can, you, most traders. Uh, this is uh, corrections of where uh, you know we we give our money back, and so that's why we want to be smart when we're trading these corrections. Okay, I, mean, I got people on my trading group like, okay, do we go long now? Do we go long now? It's, it's like one of the the biggest benefits of, of my group is 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 really knowing when we have a trade, uh, and then when we don't have a trade, knowing when to stay out. You got, listen, you got to know when to stay out of the market and when to get in. Okay, we got in on. Uh, we got in on this move right here, right there, and it was beautiful. Um, yeah, my dog is coughing. My dog has COVID, guys. I think he has the coronavirus. I don't know. He just he just started coughing the other day. He's just yakking, yakking up a storm. Hey, if you could take him out, that'd be awesome. Um, and this isn't a live video. This is I'm trying to make a, <laughs> trying to make a video. I'm not gonna edit any of this out. <laughs> it is what it is. Welcome, welcome to the Pierce House. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hold on one second, guys. My wife's trying to get him out of here. <laughs> My dog has allergies or something, man. It's just, uh, anyway, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> you ever heard the phrase barking like a dog? Well, that's, that's, that's what we mean. <laughs> all right. So, um, anyway, so we're looking for, uh, where was I? Okay. So three wave move. Three wave move, okay. Oh, no one to stay out of the market. Yeah, I remember what I was saying. So we we hit this this trade here. Um, let's see, uh, and we hit uh, we hit this long here. Uh, but uh, the only problem with that is it came back on us, and uh, and basically we cut that at break even with no loss at all. Um, so uh, you know that that trade didn't continue on like we expected. We expected it to do uh, something like this. It want, oh come on! I expected one more pump. Oh, dang on! There we go. One more pump to the upside, like so. That's what I was calling for in my videos, but uh, basically we didn't get that, obviously. So again, these WXYs are hard to predict, hard to understand what they're going to do next. But uh, anyway, uh, I think we're going to be heading up again into those regions that I was talking about uh, for a uh, third leg of of this uh, correction. Here we go. Uh, sorry about that. You can see how you can see how this correction, this aspect was, uh, uh, you know, this correction was kind of kept in by these, um, by these, this trend line here. We broke it. Got another trend line. Another trend. Uh, come on. Another trend line here. We broke it. Now the question is: Do we? Do, it was the. <laughs> Is the uh, leading diagonal that I was talking about in previous videos, is that still on the table? You know, I guess, I've never really liked it, to be honest with you, as an option, but, you know, still trying to make sense of all this stuff. And so, yeah, I, I, I suppose it is still still on the table, and we could be in the beginning of a down of a down move, and so that's the bear look at it. So, you know, a, one way to look at this is that, you know, we've got a, a one, a two, a three. Three. This is what I don't like here. Four and five. I really don't like how how, how truncated that fourth wave was, and 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 just I just don't like. That's where it breaks down for me. I don't I don't like the shape of it at all for a leading diagonal. So not a big fan of that count. But uh, again, wanted to, you know, presented it to you as an option, uh, and we are breaking to the downside out of it. But uh, and, you know, other ways to look at this is that this is simply a WXY. We have one more three leg three-wave move uh, up up on 
to go. And so basically we would be looking for, uh, let's see what that would bring us to. You know, this is 8,200 to 8,700. Remember, we have fibs all the way up at 9,000. So, uh, yeah, you know, we've got... Let me get this purple line off of here. We've really just got to see what, what shape this thing is going to give us before we can really get our upside target. But again, I'd watch structure structure points here, like uh, 83, 93 at the bottom of this wave. Uh, watch the uh, the bottom of this wave as well at 70, 76, 60. We got to get past that. Um, anyway, uh, 83, 93. We got to get past that. That's if we're going to go up. That's if we're going to go up. Now, if we're going down from here, then guys, uh, where would we expect? Well, we can throw the fib retracement on this thing, and if it becomes, if that leading diagonal was indeed the way we should count it, then we'd be coming down to the 50% to the 618. That would bring us right down to this uh, golden zone, um, this golden pocket here. Uh, somewhere in between uh, fifty one twenty eight and fifty five hundred dollars is where I would expect we could come as low as a seven eight six. Uh, excuse me, and get the uh, and get the uh, forty six hundred dollar target there. Um, you know that's if this is a one wave followed by a two wave. Now if this is just a corrective wave, a WXY, it's finished, done, you can put. Uh, then we would need to be coming down in five waves, making a new low. I don't see the shape of this looking like five waves impulse. It looks more like a three wave move, uh, and uh, it's gonna go back up. Okay. Check out the hidden divergence that we see on the chart as well. That's always good to check out. We do have, uh, we do have uh, hidden divergence right here. It's hidden bullish divergence here, where you see the bottom of this peak here, and and the price action is going up. Whereas right here, we're in an oversold condition, and that peak right there is to the downward move. We also have uh, not quite uh, regular bearish, uh, bullish divergence here, but uh, it, it's tending to the upside here. So again, I'm thinking possibly we have a move to the upside going. Now, the trade I wanted to share with you uh, earlier that I mentioned, this is a good time to bring it in. Let me just close my Elliott portion of this video just by saying you know if we have a WXY we need a three wave move to the upside okay not sure if we're going to get one more hit to the low or not um, but uh, if, if it goes up again we're watching the structure zones here 76 is the first one 84 is the next one and we have structure zones all the way at $9,000 9200 so we're going to watch those on the way up now um, Let's see, what was I saying? Okay, trading uh, trading Bitcoin just by using reversal candles. Let me just show you what happens over and over and over in the market so you can uh, you can kind of get an idea. Okay, oh, uh, sorry, excuse me. I'm yawning like crazy. Well, b back to the beginning of my channel days, buddy, I would make the, all my videos early in the morning, and, uh, man, I would yawn like crazy. It became a thing. So, okay, let me show you something here. Um uh, what you need to look for, an over and over pattern, uh, a reversal pattern that Bitcoin likes to do here, is as price is coming down, okay, you're going to get one reversal candle that's just distinct. For instance, right here we had a candle down, and then this next candle right here, okay, uh, just went, let me go to the one hour chart and you can see it, you can see it there as well. There we go. We had this, uh, you know, these two candles right here uh, just come up, and they overtook, uh, they overtook uh, the price, this this last uh, this last peak right here. Okay, it came up and overtook it, and then it had a retrace. Okay, now basically what you're trying to do is when you see a candle that will overtake the last peak. OK, that's kind of a reversal candle to me. OK, what you do is you wait for the next retest of that candle, the next the, the next down move. And you enter you enter long at the bottom of that candle. So as this thing came down, we enter long and you're in for a good trade to the upside. OK, uh, let me show you a couple of the places where this happened. OK, price came up, started coming down. We got this one right here. Right there, got a nice engulfing candle right here. It engulfed this peak uh, and this peak right here, these little small peaks here on the one hour. So it engulfed all those peaks, which is fine. Once you had this retest back down here, this is your entry long, okay? And then you take this trade to the upside, okay? And that would be a, that'll, that would be a fantastic move for you that you could have caught, okay? Um, let's, uh, let's look at it to the downside, okay? Let's, let's see it. So... Right here, price was going up. Now, uh, 
let's see here. Uh, let me let me show you what invalidates it here. Like when price came up, we had an engulfing candle to the downside. You say, okay, we're going to go short now, right? Well, when it when it retested it, when when price came back and retested, it it took out it took out the high. It overtook it, so we wouldn't we wouldn't count that as a valid uh, as a valid entry there. Okay. <sighs> Excuse me. So here's price. Here's price. It came up to a peak here, and then boom. It came down. Now, uh, hard to see on the one-hour chart, but the last peak uh, that you'd want to watch here, for right there, is a little bit of because we had a boom and then a boom on a smaller time frame. You would see it. In fact, you can go to the 15-minute chart and we can see it there. Oh, sorry. Where were we on the chart? Okay. Right there. Okay, so there's a peak right here. Okay, so all of this overtook it. Uh, and so it's kind of a reversal pattern here. But on the one hour chart, it looks more like uh, a single candle. Let's see, where were we? Okay, single candle came came down, took that out. Okay, uh, actually three candles came out, and took out quite a bit of it. We had our pullback. That's your entry short, and you could have traded that to the downside. Okay, all right, let's look at another one here. Here again, you got kind of an engulfing candle, engulfed the last candle, uh, it kind of came up and then retested. Once it retests, that's your entry long, and you can go from there. Okay, not the best signal there. The engulfers are the best. The best signals. The engulfing candles are. All right. Okay, here we didn't get the opportunity uh, with the engulfing candle and a retest, guys. This just thing, this just, this thing just took off. It when it took uh, took this peak out. So basically, what you would have this is a larger time frame trade. So basically, as this came up, once this came down in three ways, we actually got this trade. We took this trade to the upside. Okay, and we traded that, traded it all the way, all the way to the top. Okay, got an engulfing candle here. Uh, once the engulfing candle came down, what happened? Uh, this uh, this thing came up, um, and uh, we took it short from from here. We actually took it short down here, but we didn't get the follow through. That trade got stopped out. Uh, uh, that trade got stopped out uh, for break even. We it came down a nice nice uh, you know a nice four hundred dollars, and somebody could have you know could have taken profit on that, but I didn't. I, I held it, and it kind of came back on me, and so I I just didn't uh, I didn't let it I didn't you know, I didn't let it go negative here. All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that that's kind of the idea of the trade, guys. So when you see an engulfing candle, uh, kind of overtake the last peak or the last price action, um, that's that's a good that's a good sign of reversal. You wait for that thing to uh, kind of come back at least fifty to sixty percent, uh, and then you can take it on to the upside. So let's see where we can apply that here. Okay, where could we apply that here? Well, look at look at our current situation right here. We had an engulfing candle here, okay, um, and price has come back down. It did not overtake the low, and so this is actually a decent entry, a decent entry for a a, a long. Okay, so we've got a, a move to the upside, three waves to the downside. It did not overtake the low, and then we, now we've got an engulf reversing candle right here. So. What I would say is that if we get a move down here, it does not break the low here and, and some continuation pattern, that's a good entry for long to go to the upside. Now, this isn't going to be a big trade, okay? It's not going to be a giant trade. Uh, we'd put the fibs on this guy and see if we can get a, a target for this. Um, it, it could turn into be a big trade, but uh, I'm not certain it will be. The one to one extension here is 7,000. That doesn't seem high enough. Uh, and then the 127 is uh, 7,050 and then 7,100. And so basically, uh, this is kind of a scalpy type trade here, unless it continues on and then you can hold it on. But if it comes back down here to 50% in this region right here, the top of these wicks, if we come and hit that, we're going to enter long, take it up to the upside, look for the one to one extension. Uh, 
uh, and the one two seven extension, you know, and that'll be a good you know two or three hundred dollar trade right there. Okay, now if you want to hold that and see if we get any follow through here and we get those third uh, those three waves to the upside, that certainly is a possibility in price action. It could could happen. Now I can't guarantee we're going to get more upside. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, again, trading is about probabilities and looking for a low uh, low risk and uh, high um, uh, high. Uh, high high probability trades um, uh, even if you don't have the probability of whether it's going to be a successful trade or not as long as it's a low risk trade uh, I'm willing to sometimes even take that as well so that's the way I'm thinking about the market here just a simple trade idea guys look for those engulfers looking for those uh, big candles on the time on the one and, and the four the four hour charts a really nice chart to find those engulfing candles um, really well so if you look at the four hour chart you see them all over the place okay you got one right here with a pullback and so that was a beautiful signal there um see so you, you got this rejection here with the pullback and that's a trade you could have taken but we didn't get the follow through so it would have came back on you okay you, you've got here you got to pu push down with a pullback that's a good entry to the downside okay uh if you were trading that now we were trading this hoping that this was going to the upside that this was just a pullback and we we're heading on uh but we didn't get it so these engulfer candles are, are the best uh best signals to to find when you get them because uh, they really really indicate that uh, that price is shifting momentum to the the other way but be ready to stop those things out and don't forget that if, you know if, if it retraces back and, and it goes beyond the previous low or the previous high then you know that trade idea is invalidated so the idea <laughs> excuse me the idea here is that as as price is coming down you're looking for an engulfing candle with a retrace there's your entry point on you go okay or price is going up okay uh and, it, uh, and then you get an engulfing candle retrace there's your entry right here to the downside okay so that's the idea so uh, that's a nice little signal nice little way to trade uh, price action it's just price action trading uh you know and then you can you know look for structure look for fib levels uh for for entries and exits or just or just scalp a couple hundred bucks a at a time and uh and see how it does for you okay all right well there you go i think i've talked long enough on this uh channel there's just some ideas for you hope you enjoy the channel i'm gonna start getting my videos out first thing in the morning again like i used to uh i just it's just when i got sick and uh, and just i got behind in work um just everything just kind of got discombobulated so i'm gonna start doing sunday night charts again uh as well as uh, thursday night uh, trading night school i'm gonna get back uh, into those things as well we're gonna get back into the rhythm of our old channel way so uh hope uh hope you'll uh, stick around and enjoy some of that content some of you are new you're not even sure what i'm talking about but we did uh, live streams every sunday night and every thursday night we did a live stream but it's trading night school where we learn how to trade uh trade the market with uh, just simple strategies learn an elliott wave all those videos are recorded in, in my in my videos list uh, i've got a playlist started but i haven't updated it. i need to get that updated so anyway I, i'm just so busy i'm a pastor and a dad and a contractor and and and, uh, and a husband and all those things and i just got so many irons in the fire right now and i run a trading group as well the jim of all trades uh, telegram group and so if you want to be a part of that you can i spend a lot of time in there um helping those traders and uh, just keeping everybody updated with the elliott wave count and the trade strategies and the uh and the where good entries are and things of that nature. So if you need help learning to trade in that way on a more one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, in a, in a group setting or a one-to-one -one, uh, basis, you know, you might check out my Patreon page in the description. Hey, appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you again later. And happy Easter. He is risen. That, that is the reason uh, for Easter that uh, our Lord uh, God sent his son to die on a cross for sinners. And he laid down his life for people like you and for me. Uh, that he might bear our sins and his body on the tree. Uh, by his stripes we can be healed. So uh, hey, tomorrow uh, we commemorate the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, and uh, we celebrate the victory that he won over the grave. And uh, we have life in him. So uh, I hope uh, you'll consider uh, uh, considering the claims of Christ and who he was and what he did for you on this Easter, uh, on this Easter weekend. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.